After years of disengagement, ties between the U.S. and Pakistan are warming. But what the future of relations look like is still unknown. Hussein Haqqani is director of South and Central Asia at the Hudson Institute, formerly Pakistan's ambassador to the U.S. Mr. Ambassador, welcome to the program. Pleasure being here, Mimi. American forces are no longer in Afghanistan. What is Pakistan's strategic importance to the U.S. now? With the departure of the American forces from Afghanistan, the U.S. no longer depends on Pakistan for logistical support for those forces. But Pakistan remains intrinsically important. Uh, it is one of seven countries in the world that have demonstrated nuclear weapons capability. It sits at the crossroads of the Middle East, Central Asia, and South Asia. It borders China, India, and Iran, all countries important to the United States, uh, either as adversaries, rivals, or allies. And lastly, it has the 10th largest army in the world. It also has one of the fastest growing populations, and it is a country where radical Islamism has found a support and root for years. You must remember Osama bin Laden was found there. So the country remains important for all those reasons, if not as the logistical support base for American forces in Afghanistan. Well, you mentioned Islamic radicalism. A common criticism is that Pakistan hasn't done enough to curb terrorism. Will that change? I mean, could, could we see even less cooperation from Pakistan? Uh, Pakistan, of course, has always been uh, uh, conflicted on this subject. Uh, Pakistan supported uh, jihadi radicals as a way of uh, equalizing power with India, which it considers a rival. Uh, and the rest of the world, of course, wants Pakistan to end all support for Islamist radicals. And Pakistan's reluctance to do that has been a major impediment to close US-Pakistan ties. I don't see a major change in Pakistan's attitude except at the margins. And as a result, I do see that this issue will continue to be a problem between the US and Pakistan, as well as other countries in Pakistan. Pakistan's answer to all criticism is we've done a lot, but we cannot completely eliminate support for a particular point of view in our country. And secondly, since the rest of the world does not help us in dealing with what we consider to be the Indian threat, we have no choice but to let these people uh, take, uh, take up arms and at least equalize the power difference that exists between Pakistan and India at, at, in a conventional capacity cap uh, and capability. And what do you see as the drawbacks to the US of disengaging with Pakistan? Pakistan does not want to disengage, so it is not in the, in the advantage of the United States to uh, pass up the opportunity to engage with a country that wants to engage with it, even if it is a conditional engagement. The US can have conditional engagement with Pakistan. Not having an engagement means the US has no visibility on what Pakistan is doing with its nuclear weapons program. The US has limited intelligence capability in pursuing jihadi terrorists, both in Pakistan and Afghanistan. And also, uh, the U.S. loses the potential for deploying Pakistani forces in third countries, which is a possibility if Pakistan and the United States can work things out between themselves. And what is Pakistan's relationship with China now? And, and how has that been evolving? Pakistan has been close to China for years. And as relations between Pakistan and the United States have become strained, uh, China has become the major supporter of Pakistan in the regional context. Now, Pakistan and China have one thing in common. Both of them have a negative view of India. And uh, uh, that has been the reason why China has built up Pakistan's capabilities. There, there are uh, rumors to the effect that Pakistan's nuclear and missile capacity capability depended heavily on Chinese support, and Pakistan's military still gets a lot of support from China. The problem is the Pakistani elite wants close ties with the West. Uh, it does not want completely to be dependent on China. And while the US has to be wary of Pakistan's dependence on China and close ties to China, it is not in America's interest to uh, leave the arena completely and end up making a country that has a pro-Western elite to end up a, be a bit like North Korea totally dependent on China with no significant relations with others. So the American uh, engagement with Pakistan has to be both conditional 
and at the same time based on realities of Pakistan's attitude, which is often shaped by a single-minded negativity towards India. Well, speaking of India, uh, they obviously have a very contentious relationship. Um, how does the U.S. engage with both countries without upsetting the other one? Uh, it's difficult to do that, but the fact remains that India is now America's major partner. Uh, there is a, a much bigger trade relationship between India and the U.S., uh, India is, has been consistently a democracy. Pakistan has not. Uh, India supports a lot of American foreign policy objectives. Pakistan does not. So in a way, the choice has already made made. Pakistan has chosen China. India has chosen the United States. As a result, it's natural for the U.S. to prefer India over Pakistan. But there is another dynamic here. Pakistan has suffered a lot with its endless competition with India. It just can't compete with India anymore. The size difference, the difference between the economies, uh, the difference between the rates of growth uh, is just insurmountable for Pakistan. It would be in Pakistan's interest to negotiate a settlement with India that allows it to become a normal country instead of a jihadi, radical, infested country that is only half a democracy, that doesn't send a large number of its school-going age children to school, that has a poor literacy rate, and that does not invest in human capital, and its economy remains dependent on loans uh, and, and constant borrowing, borrowing from Paul to pay Peter, and that is not the way forward for the country. All right, so, Ambassador, thanks so much. We'll have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.